In this week's members video on my membership section, robertcabral.com, I'm releasing a new video called The Ultimate E-Collar Hack, and I wanna make a version of it available here on YouTube for everyone to see. I think it's a very important video for people to see who are training at the advanced level because it gives a lot of tips and tricks that can make the e-collar training much more beneficial, much more, um, much more fair to a dog that the corrections are delivered in a more humane, more effective way. But I gotta caution people that it's got to be only used by people who really understand the e-collar. So if you're a beginner, beginner trainer, you're just starting out or like you're just dabbling your feet in the e-collar, this might not be the video for you. Watch it, consult somebody who is an expert trainer and work with them to understand this. First of all, I wanna be crystal clear that the e-collar is not a tool used to teach behaviors. It's a, a tool that we use to reinforce behaviors once the dog understands them. There's nothing I hate more than seeing people holding the remote control of an e-collar, shocking a dog who doesn't know what's going on. It's complete abuse. An e-collar is the most humane tool that can possibly be used because it takes the correction off of you. You're not yanking the leash. You're not scruffing the dog. You're not correcting the dog. The collar is correcting the dog. That is why it's an extremely beneficial tool. Now, it's people who are idiots, who, who abuse the tool, who make it bad for everybody. Nobody wants to use an e-collar after they've seen someone shocking a dog and the dog is screaming without a way to get away. So, that being said, I wanna introduce you to the basics of these hacks, and I'll put some of the videos from my member section here into this video. First of all, one thing I always do with all of my e-collars is I take the actual collar and I put it differently than most people use it. So most collars you will see are going to be threaded through the back of this and the strap goes around here and pushes the entire collar into the neck of the dog. That's fine and good for some dogs who might need it, but it's a lot better to fasten the prongs. And I've got another video on this, um, to fasten the collar between the prongs and the, the box. So in other words, if you look here, the prongs are simply attached here, and I'm gonna show you with a little wrench here. This can be done with any collar, any brand. I'm using a Garmin Delta Sport XE, but you can do it with a dog tree, you can do it with a e-collar technology, any good quality collar. So you'll see right here is the, the, the box. This is the strap that comes with it. I use the holes that are already fitted in. I put the, put this up here so you can see it. I put the um, prong through and then I attach the prong into the collar. So what this does now simply is pull the collar, the prongs actually, into the dog's neck as opposed to pushing the entire collar in, right? So what I want people also to understand is before you ever use an e-collar on your dog, start at a low level and feel what this feels like to you. Here's a three, I can actually put it on my neck and feel three, I can feel and that's where I would probably start with my dog. Two, I can barely feel the two, but the three I can feel. I'm giving myself a level three correction here. Um, some people will choose to put it on their fingers, which you can feel here. Your fingers are a lot less sensitive than your neck. Your neck right here is extremely, extremely sensitive. So um, your dog's skin is probably gonna be closer to your fingers, the skin on your fingers than that on your neck but try the collar on yourself first. Make sure you understand what the dog should be feeling and what that feeling is like. If you're not gonna be willing to do that, don't use the collar on your dog. So that's my first hack. That's the hack number one. Hack number two, and I'll run a video on how to make this yourself, is this one, where I take the box real similarly here, and I put the box on put the, the strap between the box and the prongs. So there's two prongs here. And then I run a series of wires up the sides here. You can see it here. There. So you can see it here, how the prongs are on all four sides. So now the prongs here will deliver the correction on the outside of the collar, as well as on the bottom of the collar. Now this was originally 
my ultimate e-collar hack. And I'm going to show you in a video real quickly how to make this. I also don't like the straps that come with a collar because I believe the problem with that is, is that it cinches the dog, uh, the dog's neck and that can be too tight. So in other words, as a dog works more and more and more, whether you're doing protection dog sports or high level obedience, the more the dog works, the more the dog barks, the more the muscles of the neck expand and the collar gets tighter and tighter on the dog. By using a little um, shock cord here, a little bungee cord, it gives you the ability to cinch down, have it nice and snug on the dog's neck. But as the neck expands, this can still grow a little bit, which is a real, real, real benefit. So the first thing I'm going to do is take your old collar, cut it down to just about enough length, which you'll need to go from the side to the two sides of the neck. I'll round the edges a little bit. What I'll do is put a D-ring in here. You can get brass or stainless or nickel plate or whatever you like. And then I make this hole a little bit bigger right here. And I'll put my Chicago screw through here. I usually like to put, not that it really matters, but I put the flat side of the screw here and then the screw part here. Which is take the two prongs that are on it and take them off. Put those aside for now. And what we're gonna do is make sure you center your strap to your collar. And I put one here and then the second one here. This might be a little bit off, so it is. You're gonna just jiggle and adjust it. Once I get this here, so this is essentially the way the collar is now going to fit onto the dog. But what we want to do is add these prongs on the side. But they're going to go about here and here. And I would try to make that as even as possible as you can see here. So in order to do that, you're going to need some wire. And if you can find like a good 20 gauge wire, use a solid core wire. It's going to be a lot easier for you than to use a braided wire. And just cut a piece off. And the first thing you'll do is you'll thread it through from here so you know that you're going to come on top of this prong. And what I do at this point is I'll strip the wire down. Okay. And then I'll now back out enough so that I can slip this wire underneath. Now I can slip this underneath this prong here and there it is. Also remember that the direction you turn the prong in should be the direction that the wire is in underneath the prong. And now what I like to do just for aesthetic sakes is weave this through and now here I'm going to strip the wire again. You're now going to need a, a lock nut. Bend this wire, the screw comes in from the back and then the wire is right on top of the screw like this. Take your lock nut and the lock nut is going to make it easier so you don't have to keep tightening it every time and simply tighten it down. So now you see you have a pure flow of electricity from this prong all the way through over to here which would be on the side of the dog's neck. Now we'll do the other side just as well. So simply in just a few minutes, you're now taking a collar that only has two prongs on the front and made it into a collar that has four prongs. You want to be aware that these two exposed nuts here, you can put some plastic on them, um, some of the plastic coat on them, but if the dog's collar connects here, you're going to short out your collar. So be aware of that if you're still using a, a fur saver on top of this. From here, all I do is I thread the shock cord back through here. This is just a stopper. You can get it in any hiking store. And it's made for shock cord. 
So when you push your shock cord through here, it feeds. This is the collar I've used for 10 plus years. I came up with this idea about 10 years ago, I would probably say. And um, the video that you're going to see or that you, you saw on this, you'll see I was quite a bit younger. Now, the ultimate e-collar hack is this one. And this one really requires a more advanced level of training or trainer because it looks very cruel, but it's actually not. And I'm going to tell you why. Here's the point. On this collar, which is turned on here, when I correct myself, and here I'm correcting myself at a level three, I feel the tingling on these two prongs. When I correct myself on this collar, I feel the correction on four prongs. So I've dispersed the electricity across four points. That does two things. One, it gives me a more balanced correction between the four points. Where here, it's only on two points. But if I can disperse that among this many points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I'm dispersing the correction even more. I can use a lower level of stimulation. One of the biggest problems with e-collars is that the prongs don't connect properly to the dog's skin. They're buried on top of the fur and the undercoat of the dog. When that happens, people keep turning the level of the, of the uh, collar up higher and higher. And all that does is when it actually connects on the dog, it zaps the dog and shocks the dog, right? As opposed to it being a correction, now you're freaking out the dog. When you disperse it among more points of distribution, you have a much better chance of the collar being connected to the dog's neck at all times and using a much lower level of stimulation. I made this collar 10 years ago when I first started Goofy in IPO. And it, the hack is simple. And I can just show it to you here. It's two screws that attach a Herm Springer prong to the collar, to the box right here. The key takeaway from this collar is that when you attach the prongs to the box, the prongs can't touch. The prongs, when they touch this way, they short out the collar. You'll ruin the, electro the electronics in your collar. And I think obviously no matter what, you're gonna void your warranty. And again, this is a little uh, shock cord back here. These are little stoppers. All of these things can be bought at your, your everyday hiking store, or you can buy them online if you like. So now with this turned on, you can see it's turned on here. I'm gonna go much, much lower on my collar, but level one, I can already feel level one. I've never felt a level one by touching the prongs on a regular collar. Here's two, and I can feel that already really nicely. Adjust it here. There's two. You can feel it all through here, here. On two. So on a two, I'm feeling what I would normally feel here on a three, four, or a five. So you can dial your intensity way down. So you can see by using this type of collar, you're dispersing the electricity throughout the entire collar around the entire neck of the dog. And there are collars out now that use this exact principle in a very, very expensive collar. And they're very, very good collar and they work very, very well. This is the ultimate hack where you can make your own collar like this. A couple things to keep in mind. One, don't have a chain on top of your dog's neck when you're using this because it'll short out the collar. Two, make sure there's nothing metal connecting with anywhere here because it's gonna short out your collar. You're gonna, blow, you're gonna ruin your collar. These two um, ends never, never touch. It's just a strap. And again, like I said, why did I use this? Why did I develop this? Because by using it on my own neck, by figuring out on my own body how effective this is, it gave me the idea to make the collar a little bit more humane on your dog. That is the ultimate e-collar hack. You saw it here first. Just remember that. Be safe and be sane and be humane with your dog in training. And when you use something like an e-collar, try it on yourself first. Give yourself the opportunity to understand what your dog is about to feel and make training with your dog humane, fair, and most of all, fun. If you want to see the rest of this video, check out my site, robertcabral.com, for all the best online dog training available anywhere.